Hello, I would like to welcome you to the Myeloma 2016 meeting in Boston. Um, this group has focused on um, descriptions of their research with uh, CAR T cells. And I would like to take the opportunity to introduce the panel of speakers, Dr. Stattmauer, Dr. Hudacek, and Dr. Kokendorfer. That will be discussing the highlights of uh, their talks today. So let's start off with Dr. Stattmauer. Um, you have taken a very interesting approach in terms of um, expanding the role of the CD19 targeted T cells, which have mostly up to now been used to target t uh, tumors that express CD19. But this approach of t using this for a, a tumor that doesn't express CD19 is interesting, and I was wondering if you could sort of elaborate on the rationale and the results. Sure. CD19 is not an obvious uh, target for multiple myeloma, uh, given that most characteristically, when we look at flow cytometry data from malignant plasma cells, uh, it's, it's frequently either CD19 dim or CD19 negative. But our hypothesis was that, there, that a plasma cell is a B cell and that the malignant um, precursor is a B cell that would be CD19 positive. And there's some very good evidence, even from your institution, that, that this may be the case. Additionally, we, we thought that um, maybe one of the reasons why uh, myeloma progresses is because there are some CD19 positive um, uh, niches of, of, of cells that uh, may be the either clonal or um, particularly refractory or resistant biologically to therapy. And so, so uh, we thought that maybe CD19 would be a reasonable target, but perhaps not by itself. And so what we designed was a, a trial that might um, give us some hint whether this is true. And so we looked at patients who had had an autologous stem cell transplant for myeloma, very common uh, treatment for the disease, um, but who had in, in effect failed the trial, that they had a very short um, duration of uh, remission, less than a year. And then they received many other therapies. And then um, we ultimately said, let's give as a salvage therapy, which has become more and more a, a, a common uh, approach with another high dose melphalan and autologous stem cell transplant, but this time infusing these anti-CD19 um, uh, uh, CAR T cells and see if we could get a remission inversion, have a second remission that lasts longer than the first remission. And so we treated 10 patients and we've actually seen uh, such, a, such an event. Exactly why that occurs, where we had a patient who had a three to six month initial remission and now over 15 months later was uh, in a strict complete remission. Exactly why that's happening, whether it's truly just targeting these these cells or whether it's some combination or some other effect, we're still trying to figure out. But certainly clinically, there's a subset of patients who have benefited from this approach. Yeah, no, that's a, a very interesting approach. I think attracts or speaks to the biology of, of, of myeloma that isn't derived from a mature plasma cell, but something earlier, as you mentioned. But I think going back to the mature plasma cell, I mean, I think you know, one of the things with myeloma is that it has traditionally not had a single marker that has stood out as being a dominant one, but it looks like BCMA is one that's present on the majority of, of the plasma cells. And so if you could speak about your work with the BCMA CAR T cells. Yeah, so um, at the NCI, we were very encouraged by the anti-CD19 CAR research with myeloma, with um, lymphoma and leukemia that we carried out. And we were looking to develop a new therapy for multiple myeloma. So we were, looking for an antigen that was expressed only on plasma cells and possibly B cells that was also expressed by multiple myeloma. And we s settled on an antigen called B cell maturation antigen, which is abbreviated BCMA. We did preclinical work on this and then started a, a phase one clinical trial. We treated patients on a dose escalation trial that um, in the early stages it seemed like there was not a lot of antimyeloma activity, but once we got to the higher dose levels, we found some striking antimyeloma activity, including patients with up to 90% of their bone marrow being taken over by myeloma, um, achieving remissions where the myeloma was completely undetectable. So it's, it's a very small number of patients. Um, the research is very early, but one of the great things about the CAR field is that there's great room for improvement. So we can modify many different things, such as the DNA structure of the CARs, 
the way the cells are prepared in cell culture and also the clinical application of the CARs. So again, I want to emphasize it's extremely early, it's extremely small numbers of patients that we've treated. But I think that it is possible that the chimeric antigen receptor T cells will become an important part of the therapy for multiple myeloma in the future. Thank you. I mean, I think you've highlighted a few of the points. I mean, there clearly has been significant enthusiasm in terms of what uh, gene-modified T cells can do, and most of the approaches have focused on virally transduced T cells. But Dr. Hudacek here presented, I think, some very interesting data of sort of the next generation of how to get uh, these T cells modified and potentially how to solve some of the problems of persistence or to increase the intrinsic um, tumor specificity of these cells, not so much by adding new genes, but by modifying certain subsets. So if you want to sort of expound on those points. Yeah, we've been interested in looking for the optimal T cells, or white blood cells, that when modified with a CAR can then confer a maximum anti-tumor response. There are killer cells and helper cells, and we uh, looked at different subsets of these uh, families, killers and helpers. Uh, tested them in preclinical models and settled on a combination of a certain memory uh, subset killer cell, central memory CD8 positive cells, and then naive um, CD4 helper cells because we found that they work very well together synergistically. And uh, we, we show in preclinical work that when we introduce the CAR genes into these subsets, um, we can get. Um, better responses at lower doses of T cells. And the mechanism for this is that they engraft better after the transfer and they proliferate better in, in our case, a mouse, but hopefully this will also be the case then in a patient. And there's actually already data that this will also happen in, in patients from a clinical trial that is being conducted with these defined composition CAR T cell products. And the other technology um, we've been working on is how do we get the genetic information for the CAR into the cell. And typically what is being done is that viral vectors, lab vectors, are being used to do this. Um, it is quite feasible to manufacture them, but it's still a bottleneck if you want to treat really large numbers of patients. So we've been interested in, um, or we've been pursuing non-viral gene transfer systems, and this can be done. Basically, the T cells receive um, an electric shock, and this is how the genetic information is being introduced. Problem is, T cells don't like to get an electric shock. They, um, there's a um, substantial rate of, of death with the T cells. And we've modified the system such that we can limit the death and um, increase the rate of which this CAR gene is then integrated into the T cell genome. Um, it's called sleeping beauty transposition. And we've modified these, this vector system such that we can now get reliably very high gene transfer rates. And we are quite confident that this will pave the way to really um, be able to treat large numbers of patients. And it's also quite affordable to, to make these DNA vectors instead of viral vectors. We've exemplified this on, on, on the SLAMF7 molecule that is our target in multiple myeloma. Um, SLAMF7 is uniformly expressed on myeloma cells. There is um, experience with targeting this molecule with the elotuzumab antibody. And we have now um, targeted this molecule with CAR T cells. Um, they have greater potency, and we show in our preclinical pre models that, in fact, we can be quite effective against uh, myeloma. When we target this molecule, and we're hopeful that also in a clinical setting this will hold true. Well, in conclusion, I think you've heard uh, some of the exciting results that are being developed now in the treatment of myeloma, specifically with uh, gene-modified T cells targeting a precursor. Uh, defined tumor antigens and also novel approaches to increase overall efficacy. So I would like to thank the panelists for um, their contributions and to thank all of you listeners.